hello my friends welcome to another episode of deep true crime i'm manny rodriguez in today's episode we're diving in to the missing persons case of dylan browns young man just goes missing no one knows where he's at, but there have been some strange encounters along the way. There's been some new developments along the way. And if it's one thing I have to do in my area is spread the word. And when I say my area, I don't mean where I live. I mean that my channel needs to help Dylan Rounds be Found. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. Where is Dylan Rounds? And we're going to be diving into everything that is surrounding this case. And here is the truth. I'm not going to be sharing conspiracy theories. I'm not going to be sharing some of the most craziest things I've seen people share with no backing information on it. Their gut feeling does not mean that they're right. I've seen some of the most craziest things being said. And yes, some of those crazy things actually do happen in this world, but why throw stuff out there because you have this gut feeling that has nothing to do with what has been said. So I'm gonna do my absolute best to share the facts as we know it either directly from his mom herself or directly from people who are surrounding the case trying to solve this case. Let's go ahead and dive into it, why don't we? Where is Dylan Rounds? On Wednesday, May 25th of 2022, Dylan tells his mother Candace about a strange encounter with some guy who was barefoot and bloody along the roadside who wanted a ride to Montello, Nevada. This person was later identified as Chase Benstra. See, family members, they say that he called several relatives on May 25th after having a weird run-in with a man on a gravel road. That man, believed to be Venstra, as seen in this photo, he was spotted several days later in Montello, Nevada. On May 26, Elko County Sheriff's Office, they verified that Dylan was in Montello as they can tell through his bank account usage. So they know that he was in Montello as of May 26, 2022. That same day, this would be Dylan's last phone call with both his mom. As you can see pictured here, where they were interviewed by Nate Eaton of East Idaho News. Now, as of Friday, May 27th, 2022, there were some eyewitnesses that said that they saw Dylan in Montello, Nevada, at the Saddle Sore Bar and Grill. But the thing with that is, these eyewitnesses have not been able to be confirmed whether this sighting was actual accurate or not but multiple eyewitnesses do say that they saw him at the saddle sore bar and grill on friday may 27th of 2022 based upon confirmed bank account information he was last confirmed to be at the cowboy bar and grill on thursday may 26th so they do have proof that he was actually at the Cowboy Bar and Cafe. On May 28th at 6.51 a.m., Dylan and his grandma are on the phone. He tells his grandmother he had to get his grain truck put away in the shed, which is at a location five miles west of his farm, to keep it away from the rain and he would call her back. Elko County Sheriff's Office, they confirmed through cell phone data that he was at or near his farm in Lucen for this phone call. The Elko County Sheriff's Office, they would also release the last cell phone data that came from his phone, which was at or near his farm. It is also said to be that Chase Venstra was seen on camera 200 miles away from Lucen, Nevada that same night of May 28th. As of Sunday, May 29th, Dylan had not called his grandmother back, so she called Don 
And Don is a person who had worked for Dylan on the farm, and he is a family friend. And Dylan's grandma calls Don to check on him since he wasn't answering her phone call. Don and Jim, who's also another farm helper, they go to Dylan's farm and they look for him, but he is nowhere to be found. As of Monday, May 30th, Don and Jim had not been able to locate Dylan, so they call his grandmother to let him know that they did not find him. So then his grandmother reaches out to his best friend, JD, to see if he had heard from him. JD says he has not heard from Dylan, so then he decides to reach out to Dylan's mother to see if she had heard from him. She called around to other family members and no one had spoken with Dylan Rounds. And so Dylan's parents, they drive to the farm to see if they can figure out where Dylan is at. They then file a missing person report with Box Elder County Sheriff's Office during the drive down there. They arrive to find the C truck had been put in the shed. Dylan's truck was at his trailer and it had been pressure washed. The seat position had been moved very far forward to accommodate a shorter person and there were no tracks or footprints. 90 minutes into the missing person report, and search of the area, Box Elder County Sheriff's Office, the search and rescue team, they locate Dylan's boots behind a pile of dirt about a hundred yards south from where the grain truck is located. To give you a visual, this is where the boots were found and this is where Dylan's grain truck was. And so Box Elder Sheriff's Office search and rescue, they take the boots and place them in their patrol vehicle. It wouldn't be for about another week before those boots are sent off to a lab in order to investigate the boots. On Tuesday, May 31st, Dylan's family received a call from a citizen of Montello. His name is Kurt. And Kurt used to work for Dylan Rounds. And he stated that Dylan was being held in a specific location by Chase and another gentleman in Montello, Nevada. Elko County Sheriff's Office, they sent out six deputies, but he was not there and they had searched the entire property. A lot of searches would begin and they're searching for Dylan every which way they can. And so they're doing searches. The searches were taking place by the by the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office. There were about there were ATVs, horses, foot search parties, cadaver dogs. They were looking everywhere to see if they can find him. And after about six hours of searching, the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office, they called off the search because they said they were 99% sure he wasn't in this three by five mile area search radius. And so about 200 to 300 more search volunteers continue searching all types of places. I mean, they did everything they can. They even drained and searched Dylan's pond to see if there was any signs in there. His phone would last ping on or near his farm at about 3.41 p.m. on May 28th of 2022, and that's on a Saturday. The only thing that was missing was Dylan's phone, his wallet, a pistol, and his he fob. You can kind of see where Dylan's farm is to the right of the screen. You can see where his boots were found. And then you can see the distance from Montello, Nevada, where Cowboy Bar and Cafe and the saddle bar and where their saddle, where the saddle sore and bar are. And then the family is told they found a drop of blood on the boots. Whether that blood belongs to Dylan or one of the animals that he farmed, there's no telling that. That part has not been confirmed yet, but they are told they found a drop of blood, but the family is told that they found a drop of blood on the boots. And then Chase Venstra was arrested, was arrested in Davis County, Utah, but these charges are not related to 
Dylan Rounds. It was completely on an unrelated charges. The family was given permission by the Box Elder County Sheriff's Office to take the pickup truck from the farm without any fingerprinting or forensic investigation. That was one of the first mistakes that they would do because you have to, you have to fingerprint this thing before anyone can take it. And then finally, Dylan's boots are logged into the police lab. It seemed like at the beginning, the sheriff's office, they just said he left on his own and they weren't really treating this as a criminal activity. They did treat it as a missing person, but they didn't know if he left on his own or anything like that. It seemed like until the mom did an interview with Nate Eaton of East Idaho News, that's when it seemed like the law authority we're going to take this more seriously. And so June 10th, Candace, Dylan's mom, would meet with the Elder County Sheriff's Office for almost five hours. And they go through the case from top to bottom. And they agree to offer any additional resource for the search. So it seems like they start taking it seriously a little more. And then middle of June, Bonville County, Idaho took Dylan's pickup truck into custody. Now this investigation would be classified as a criminal investigation and the FBI has officially become involved in the investigation. This too was about the middle of June, June 15th. Both of Dylan's campers were taken into police custody. They even did a bunch of searches around a lot of the caves in the local area. There was about 18 mines or caves that were searched thoroughly as could be done safe. And they literally did everything they can to find Dylan. On June 16, law enforcement served a search warrant on James, known as Jim Brenner. During that search, ball ammunition, ignition caps, black powder, and speed load, all related to muzzle loading, were located and photographed in the trailer, but the items were not seized at this time according to those charges. Muzzle loading seems like more of a term that hunters would use. This surrounds a variety of firearms that are loaded through the muzzle of the barrel, from revolvers and single shot pistols to rifles and shotguns. When the shooter fires a muzzle loader, the propellant is ignited and expanding gases force a projectile out of the barrel. Five days later, officers went back to Jim Brenner's trailer with another search warrant and more ammunition, a muzzle loader, black powder, and ignition caps were seized. On June 23rd, Jim Brenner was charged in first district court with three counts of being a restricted person in possession of a firearm. On June 30th, Jim Brenner he was charged in the U.S. District Court of Utah with being a felon in possession of a firearm. On July 7, in a joint press release, Box Elder County Sheriff's Office and the FBI name James Brenner as a suspect in the disappearance of Dylan Rounds. And just a reminder that he is in jail as we speak, but on un- related charges. He's just a suspect as of now. He has not been charged in the disappearance of Dylan Rounds. Court documents show that Brenner has a criminal history. On May 21, 2012, Brenner was sentenced to 33 months in prison for a conviction of being a felon in possession of a firearm. It also adds that he has several other convictions as well. According to the charging documents against Jim, on May 30th, 2022, Box Elder County Dispatch received a call of a missing 19-year-old male, Dylan Rounds. He was last seen in Lucen, Utah. On this day, Dylan Rounds contacted a relative by phone and told him that he was put in the grain truck into shelter. James Brenner, the subject in this case, has no ownership in the land parcels and is squatting 
in a trailer located on the land. Dylan Round's property is a five mile walk towards the southeast of where Brenner was currently living, which is his trailer right here. While searching for the missing 19 year old, Brenner was interviewed on June 7th of 2022. And Don as well, who is considered family friends of Dylan Rounds, was also interviewed by law enforcement. See, Jim Brenner and Don, who we know as DH, but we know the D stands for Don, not too sure what the H stands for. And then as I mentioned, they executed a search warrant at the trailer where Brenner was living, and that's when they find all that stuff. On June 20th, a friend and neighbor of Jim Brenner, that goes by DH, was interviewed. And during that interview, Don advised that after Dylan Rounds went missing, and sometime after Brenner's initial June 7, 2022 interview, Brenner brought three black powder guns over to Don's residence and asked him to safe keep them. When Don asked why, Brenner stated that he needed to do this for his own safety and that the last time he had trouble with the law, they took everything from him and he did not want the things he had left to be taken again. And so Don agreed to store the muzzle loaders for him. At the time of the interview, Don turned over the three muzzle loaders to the Box Elder County Sheriff, who then books them into evidence. On June 21st, Don is interviewed again by the FBI. And during this interview, Don advised that Brenner had also brought him a 22 caliber rifle around the same time he had brought over the muzzle loader. Don told the police that he didn't mention the 22 rifle when interviewed before because he had been owed money by the rifle's original owner and that he felt that he should have a claim over the 22 rifle that Brenner asked him to store to cover the debt. Don explains that the rifle had been left in a trailer on the property where Brenner had been living prior to Brenner living there by a person who owed Don money. Brenner, upon moving into the trailer, had taken possession of that 22 rifle. Don knew that Brenner wasn't allowed to have firearms because of his criminal history. So Don turned over to the FBI the 22 rifle and case that Brenner had personally handed to him and asked him to store. And the rifle was loaded with five rounds of 22 caliber ammunition. During this second search warrant that was conducted at the trailer where Brenner was currently living, during this warrant, that's when they seized a muzzle loader, one box of 45 lead round ball ammunition, one box of spear, 570 lead ball, one box of federal 45 lead ball ammunition, ignition cap, four pounds of Hornady Black's black powder, and speed loads and book them into evidence. They did request that an issue, that an arrest warrant be issued for James Brenner for having these guns as a felon, which he was not allowed to have. James Brenner, in his court hearing, bail is denied and a tentative trial date set for September 12th on the federal weapons charges, but still nothing more than him just being a suspect in the missing person case of Dylan Round. On June 28th, the missing person reward is increased to 100 thousand dollars for any information leading to the safe return or arrest and conviction of any person responsible for the disappearance of Dylan Rounds. Dylan's parents, Justin Rounds and Candace Cooley, they said that Dylan grew up in Idaho but owned a farm in Lucen, Utah that he purchased with his grandfather in 2019. They said that Dylan would frequently go back to Idaho to visit his parents, but spent most nights living in his camper 
on the farm. Dylan Rounds, soon after graduating from high school, and something to notice in the disappearance and the now suspect, the hat that Jim Brenner is wearing looks to be the exact hat that Dylan Rounds is wearing. You can even see it in this photo. The missing person report, the hat on Dylan Rounds, and Jim Brenner, the hat on Jim Brenner looks to be just like the one that belongs to Dylan Round. Soon after graduating from high school, Dylan Round set out to complete his plan. He wanted his own land to farm. And that's what he was doing along the Nevada-Utah border when he suddenly went missing. And this would begin on Memorial Day, May 30th, when they figured out that nobody had seen Dylan Rounds for a couple of days. And for the past year, Rounds lived in an RV camper on his property in Box Elder County along the Nevada Utah border. And his mom said that Dylan's been working on this farm in Utah, his own farm on getting the ground torn out and getting prepared for his crop. This year was going to be his first crop. That farm was his whole life. And he tells his mom about this strange man. And he says, mom, you wouldn't believe this guy who jumped out of the desert. He was bloody, didn't have any shoes on. He wanted a ride. I didn't give him a ride. In Lucen, the family learned the identity of the man as Chase Venstra. But his mom said the man called her voluntarily and didn't know where Rounds could be. You know, and according to his mom, Candace, she said that they found at least three persons of interest on their own. Two were former employees of Rounds, and then she would forward the names on to the sheriff's office. And hopefully this reward being up to $100,000 will help get some answers. And that's the whole purpose of this channel. I would not be doing justice if I did not share this story. There's a lot of news out there about this, but there's also a lot of misinformation going on going around and it's pretty sickening as well it's easy what someone is willing to say because of their gut feeling their gut feeling does not mean that you're right i mean i'm blown away at some of the comments that people oh i really feel like this is what happened who cares what you feel like don't throw it out there unless you have reasonable suspicion this is how a lot of misinformation goes around you know and it even goes to jim Terry, who's supposed to be an investigator. And I don't know the guy. I'm not going to dive into who he is. I don't know him. But I do know part of misinformation, he was allegedly a private investigator first. And people were even saying, if you have tips or questions, send it to Jim Terry. He's helping with the case. I don't know. But before you know it, then there is a cease and the CIS letter from Swafford Law in Idaho Falls, Idaho. And it says, Dear Mr. Terry, my office has been retained by the Rounds and Cooley families to send this letter to you and demand that you immediately cease and desist your continued non-authorized involvement in the Dylan Rounds case. And it says here, and this is where it's critical that, again, misinformation can go around. And if he's a private investigator, before this letter, people were buying into whatever he was sharing. It was pretty obvious. And it says right here, you have made malicious, unfounded, and incorrect statements and have made verbal and written attacks on the Rounds and Cooley family. Your continued, unauthorized, malicious, false, and inflammatory statements, defamatory, and subject you to payments of damages to my clients. Your actions are diverting the focus from finding Dylan Rounds to what appears to be your own personal vendetta and or to promote yourself at the expense of the truth. And it ends by saying your background and record of services has confirmed your lack of credibility and integrity. This has further been demonstrated by your actions in this matter since your release from this matter. And it seems like he started even spreading more false information. I don't know the whole story. I'm just sharing with you the cease and desist letter. So I'm not going to dive into who this guy is, what past stuff. That's not what it's about. My point is, it's 
Do not believe everything you hear. You don't know what's true. You don't know what's one-sided. You don't know who wants attention. It, it blows my mind the misinformation that is carried on from this case. Obviously, he's, he's offended by them getting rid of him on this case. But hey, if you're just trying to get attention, it will come out. So there you have it, my friends. We want to help find Dylan Rounds. Someone has answers to this. Is it you? Please share. Please, please share. So if you have any information around Dylan Rounds, you are encouraged and asked that you report it to Box Elder County Sheriff. Here is the number for you. Or if you want to be anonymous and, and provide a tip, there is the number for you. Or email finddylanrounds at gmail.com. My friends, that's what we know so far. You can see the distance from Lucen to Montello, depending on the route you would take, it could be anywhere from 18 and a half to 20 miles, and generally about a 30 minute drive. Now Lucen, Utah, this is a small railroad community in Box Elder County, Utah, and it's located along the western side of the Great Salt Lake, 162 miles northwest of Salt Lake City. This small community was abandoned in the 1930s by original occupants. The community was resettled by four owner residents in the 1990s. And so for many, Lucen, Utah is basically a ghost town with, with some believe to be only a population of one person. So I don't know how accurate that is. Montello, Nevada, this is basically the smallest town closest to Lucen, Utah. Now, Montello is actually in Nevada. The population of Montello was as much as 50 as of 2018. It has two small bars and a market motel selling fuel and sundries comprised the whole business district. He was known to frequent Montello because it's basically the only place he can go. There's not much around there. And so that's a little of Lucen and Montello. My friends, I'm Manny Rodriguez. Thank you for joining me today. Let's help find Dylan Rounds. If you are a YouTuber, create a video. If you're not in true crime, then, then it probably is not for you. But if you are in true crime, create a video. Everyone needs to help find Dylan Rounds. There's a lot of missing people out there. Pick a case, help find these people. So many people go missing. It's, it's really tragic, really, really tragic and weird at the same time. Now, there are people that just go off on their own and they don't want to be found. But at the end of the day, right now, this is a big case and a lot of people are searching for him. Will you be one that helps try to find Dylan Rounds? Hey, you may help find him and get a hundred thousand dollar reward. But at the end of the day, let's not fall to the wayside. Someone has answers. We'll find out more if Jim Brennan knows more or will be held more accountable. I'm Manny Rodriguez. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you have an amazing, amazing day. Pray for the safe return of Dylan Round. Have a great day. Peace.